بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين جل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف It's a great honor for me to be here to attend this program which is designed to introduce the Hose Ilmi of England to members of the community who are interested in Hose studies. And I hope that what you have been watching and hearing would be inshallah useful please also share this with other people and we want everyone to be aware that there is such a hose and such a platform some people i'm sure they cannot make it but at least we want everyone to be aware that there is such a uh, blessing in London. I would like to talk a little bit about what is the nature of uh, Hosevi lifestyle. But I want to start with a hadith from Amir al Mu'minin because for us. Baraka comes when we are connected to the Quran and Sunnah. Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam in a hadith that is mentioned in Al Kafi says, Ayyuhan nas, i'lamu anna kamal al din, talabu al ilm, mal amalu bih. I think this hadith is enough. I don't need to say anything else. Maybe we can imagine if Amirul Mu'mineen was, you know, today with us, he would have said the same thing. Ayyuhan nas, O people. This is a very general address. It's not Ya Ayyuhan Ladina Amaru, Ya Ayyuhan Shia. For every human being, there is a need to study. In the way that we need something for our body to remain and grow, we need also something for our soul to remain and grow. The food for body is what we eat and drink. But the food for soul is knowledge. Without knowledge, our soul would die. We become someone book We become like people who have no understanding. But Amir al Mu'mineen emphasizes on knowledge so much that he says knowledge is not just an instrument. It's not a means only. It's an ideal. Is one of higher ends. Anna kamal al-deen talabul ilm. This is perfection of your religion, perfection your, of your faith. So it means that this is something that through your religious activities and life, you should try to achieve. So who are the people who have achieved the most from their faith? Those who are seekers of knowledge and practice what they know. Kamal al-Din Talabul 
maybe we normally think Kamal al-Din is a matter of doing more righteous deeds, which is of course good. Having good qualities, which is of course good. But Amir al-Mu'mineen, with the vision that he has, with the understanding that he has of the way Allah has structured the reality and existence, he knows that the ladder for climbing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is starting with actions and qualities. But in the end of the day, it's a matter of how much you know of Allah and how much you reflect of Allah. So you try to do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then when you know Allah better and you reflect Him better, that's when you have become very close to Him. So, Kamal al-Din talabul ilm wal amal And what is also interesting, and it's also kind of bishara, is that it's not that you have to wait till you become an ayatollah or allama, a great philosopher, a great jurist, and then you can have hope of experiencing these things. There is a group in this world who are seekers of knowledge. This group includes great philosophers and fuqaha and mufassirin, but even first year talaba, if he is accepted to become part of this group, they are all together. Seekers of knowledge. It's not a matter of who knows, it's a matter of how much you seek knowledge. Maybe a person, even after years of a study, he cannot become a great scholar. It doesn't matter. If you have really worked hard, if you have really practiced the little that you knew, you will be resurrected with ulama. Even if someone dies after one year in Hose, inshallah he will be resurrected with ulama. Because he has dedicated his life to learning, the time was not enough. Allah will complete the process for him. This is my idea and I have discussed this in Aqayat, I don't want to go into this. But anything you dedicate your life to, and then your death doesn't let you to complete, inshallah you will complete after your death. Allah will help you to finish. But the main thing is seeking knowledge. Anna kamal al-deen talabul ilm. So it's a bishara for seekers of knowledge. But at the same time, it's a warning for the people who have learned something and have stopped learning. I cannot say, Alhamdulillah, I have, you know, graduated. Alhamdulillah, I have certificates and degrees. I have, you know, publications. No. One condition for being a member of this blessed circle is the last moment of your life you must be seeking knowledge. If in my last day of life someone says there is something new about the Quran, do you want to learn? I say no. I know enough. I have other priorities. So you are not a seeker of knowledge. A seeker of knowledge is the one that is always thirsty for learning. If you have a fountain, a pool, whatever, you know, place that can contain some wood, And fresh water doesn't come into this. After some time, water becomes a sport. You know, sometimes you learn something. If you don't review, if you don't refresh yourself, if you don't ask, you don't engage, you don't read new books, after some time, 
lots of confusions, lots of misunderstanding, lots of you know forgetfulness get into it. There are people who are very good, but they go down because they don't keep themselves always updated and refreshed. Who is a real alim? A real alim is not the one who knows a lot. A real alim is not the one who has uh, taught a lot. A real alim who is the one who knows that without knowledge he cannot survive. Knowledge for him is the most important thing. If people try to do good things, for example, some people, and we respect everyone who does good things. Some people, for example, are trying to help people with money. Some people help people with giving advice, with giving, I don't know, prescriptions if they are doctors, with drawing paintings for people, I don't know, designing, engineering. These are all great things. These are all acts of ibadah if someone does any of these things for the sake of God. But a seeker of knowledge, a talab, an alim, is the one who has chosen the path of learning and teaching as way of service. We need people who provide us with bread, with water, with medicine, with dress, with, I don't know, computer, everything. We need all of them. But a Talab is the one that has chosen as his way of serving himself and other people a spread of knowledge. And I think you agree with me that this is the closest thing to what the prophets used to do. What Imams used to do. Yes, the prophets, maybe they did also other things. Sometimes they acted as shepherds, maybe they did some farming. But as a prophet, what they were expected to do was to receive knowledge and pass on knowledge and reflect the knowledge that they have received and pass on in their practice. When we say Al Ulama O Waratatul Anbiya. It means the same thing. So, Jose here in London has few functions. According to my humble understanding, maybe there are more and you can tell me. But these are the things that I have understood. One function of Jose is it's a place for people to come and seek knowledge. If someone wants a scholarly, systematic, comprehensive, and integrated understanding of Islam, this is the place. I don't say we can go up to the end here. We are just a small, you know, humble hose here. But at least we can start the foundations here. If you lay the foundation properly, then you go to people who are more qualified, places that they have more resources, more teachers, and they will build upon it. But if the foundations are not proper, and you go to a qualified person that says, okay, first we have to demolish everything so far you have built. We don't want people to reach the point that say, okay, first we have to erase your mind because you have been confused. <laughs> and then we start from scratch. So we want to lay foundations here. Good information, but also good tools. You know, we could have uh, just taught uh, four years main Islamic subjects. But as Sheikh Mirza showed, we spend good time on tools, on saf, on naf, on balad, on mantiq. Why? Because 
Everything has to come properly from foundation. You can, you know, spend some time on Aqaid and in few months you feel the difference. You spend few months on self and you don't feel any difference. <laughs> but this is the nature of the tool. Tools take time and you don't see their impact immediately. But for long term, this is very important. So, one function of the hose is to be a place for seekers of such systematic, comprehensive, scholarly presentation of Islam. Another function of the hose is that you have a group of people with whom you can do this together. You have a community of seekers of knowledge. Because I very much believe, I very much believe that in Islamic tradition of learning, knowledge is collective. Theoretically, you can learn things even in space. You can go to moon and learn. Take some books with you and study there and listen to some lectures, theoretically. But my idea is knowledge is passed on to the next generation, soul to soul. Not page to page, not even mind to mind, soul to soul. Our ulama, who were touched by the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt, they passed on this touch to us, not just theories. And now we have to pass on to other people. So when you come to Jose, you become part of a community, which is under major mother houses, under great ulama, under maraja. It's very important. I remember uh, once we had this discussion with Sheikh Mirza in uh, my office in Islamic Center. I said to Sheikh Mirza that my idea is this, that Hose is always to be connected to the main hosas. We have suppose a tree and then we transplant something to this tree. You know, in Farsi we say payvant. So sometimes, for example, you want to have a sweet, I don't know, orange. So you find a trunk and then you bring a very good, you know, orange tree, an offshoot, and try to do transplant. Whenever we start a hose, we want to make this transplantation. If it gets, if it's accepted, then you see, even if this is a new offshoot and branch, it will bring the same good fruits of that original tree. If our hose is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Ahlul Bayt accept us as people who are devoted to their teachings, the same barakah, the same nectar comes to this new offshoot. This is very little. Maybe even a child can destroy it. It's still very young, very small. But if it is accepted, the same nectar is there. And inshallah, by the passage of time, by more people coming to it, it can grow. But it's the same spirituality. It's like, for example, you know, our hadith says, if you go to Abdul Azim al Hassani, you get the reward of ziyarah of Imam Hussein. And it's not exception. All the shrines are connected to each other. All the whole 
houses are connected to each other if they are original, not fake. If they are original houses, they are all connected. So, first, you have access to systematic presentation. Second, you become part of a community of seekers of knowledge, learning together, doing mubahasa together, encouraging each other. Third, it's an opportunity for people who had their studies some years back to still be engaged in teaching and discussing. So it's also a service for the teachers. And they should also always, as I said, be seekers of knowledge. Fourth, it's a place that can offer lots of training, lots of educational packages to the people who are not necessarily becoming Hose students, but it's a hub of knowledge. It overflows. You cannot, you know, hide knowledge somewhere. It's like light. As soon as there is an opening, light goes out. Another thing which I think is very important, I feel like this, I don't know how you feel. I feel everywhere, if we have a hose, just to know that we have a hose gives confidence to people. It's like, you know, when you have masjid, when you have a shrine, these are spiritual power plants. When we know that in our town, in our country, we have a hose which is functioning, this means that we have a spiritual power plant. We have a place that we can be relying on if issues come that may need guidance. So this is also very important, of course, this adds to our responsibility. Those who work here, they should work harder, with more sincerity, with more serious approach to knowledge. The students should work hard, community should work hard to support, but also we need to introduce this, inshallah, to other people. The hadith has an ending that I just translate and then finish. I don't explain the rest because my time is over. Just translation. Allah wa inna talab al ilm awjabu alaykum min talab al ma'an. Amir al Mu'minin says, Be aware that seeking knowledge is more compulsory for you than seeking money. You have to make your earning. It's wajib. But this is more wajib. Allah distributes your rest and has guaranteed. Allah has divided and has guaranteed and He's going to keep His promise. But وَالْعِلْمُ مَخْزُونٌ عِنْدَ أَحْلِ Money is distributed, but ilm is preserved with its people. وَقَدْ أُمِرْتُمْ بِطَلَبِهِ مِنْ أَحْلِ Allah has not guaranteed that I'm going to give everyone knowledge. <laughs> it's preserved and you have been asked to go and seek knowledge. فَطْلُبُوهُ so seek knowledge. I end with this. I say to myself and to all of you, Fatulobu. Let us all seek, inshallah, knowledge. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We end with some du'as. نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم العز الأجل الأكرم وبالقرآن المستحكم وبفاطمة فأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله
ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Rahman, ya Rahim, ya Arham al-Rahimin, ya Muqabbil al-Qulub, sabbit qulubana ala dinik, wakfana ya Qadi al-Khajat, wa ya Kafi al-Muhimmat, innaka ala kullu shayin qadir, wa Allah, please send your salutations to Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, and please enable us to serve you and your religion, your book, truth, virtues, with all power and talents and skills and energy that we have. Please enable us to be seeking knowledge till the last day of our life and to share what we have learned with other people and to implement what we have learned more than anyone else. Please send your best of blessings and barakah to all our ulama who throughout the centuries for their dedication, pure Islam has been preserved and is passed on pass on to us. Please resurrect them with Muhammad and Ali Muhammad and those who are alive give them dignified, blessed, fruitful life. Please give shifa to all people who are ill. Please grant the hajat of mu'minin brothers and sisters who are here if they have any haja and any mu'min, any person who has some important things in their life that has blocked their, somehow their life, please grant them their hajat, open the blockage in their life, let them enjoy their life together, and the last thing is, please include us among the people that Imam Mahdi Jalallah Ta'ala Farad al-Sharif is pleased with what they do and prays for them and accepts them as his true helpers. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Allah. 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 Allah.